Hello and welcome to Sun Spotlight. I am your host, Charisma, grateful to be back for another episode. In addition to these interviews that I do every Thursday at noon, I also write a weekly column for the Philadelphia Sunday Sun, which you can read on newsstands every Friday. You can also check us out online at www.philasun.com and be sure to follow the Philadelphia Sunday Sun on all social media platforms. Today, I'm excited to be speaking with a very talented actor who plays Jim in the upcoming film, The Paper Tigers. I am joined today by Mikkel Shannon Jenkins. Hi, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome, I'm very happy to be here. Me too. Um, I absolutely loved The Paper Tigers. Like, I love this movie so much. I watched it like three times <laughs> when I first got go. the link. I did. I watched it like three times. I was like, I love this movie because I'm just such a fan of like coming of age stories where yeah, friends man. are just on adventures and doing all the things. And I got like a wave of nostalgia because I thought about, um, do you remember the movie The Three Ninjas? Absolutely. <laughs> it was like one of my favorite movies um, oh. <laughs> growing oh. up. So okay. I was like, oh, I'm seeing similarities. This is awesome. I love it. It was like Stand By Me vibes, like the Sam, oh, yeah. all those oh, kind yeah. of movies. I, I was just Jimmy like, Carter vibes. yeah, <laughs> I caught them vibes. I was like, <laughs> Actually, what drew me to the story is like exactly what you said. Wow. You, re you read as well as you see it. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh, man, this guy's this guy's not telling. This guy is telling a life story. Like, this is like This is, um, I mean, what's funny about it is what's happening. Not, not yeah. people trying to be funny. It's like, yo, um, it's what happens to us yeah. um, in life. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't walk away from that. Not with all Absolutely. that nostalgia. Oh, no, oh, no, <laughs> no, not, not at all. So you said it, it jumped right off the page as soon as you read it. Yep, I'm Jim. I mean, I read it and I was like, I'm Jim. Wow. Most of the time I'm like doing all this background research and trying to create, stay, you know, find the truth and then it just be, I read it and I was like, no, this is like, this guy's me. Wow. And I actually told Bao that when I met him, I said, listen, bro, I don't know where, where you're going to go, <laughs> but I'm telling you, like, like this guy's me. Like, somebody's going to have to act this guy, but this guy is me. That's amazing yeah. when that happens. <laughs> yeah. So I told my agents, right, I find this guy, like, get at him. Wow. Told, yeah. We started off, uh, you know, an audition is like five minutes most of the time. Wow. We, spent an hour, we spent like an hour and 30 minutes. First audition with him. We were on Zoom for like an hour and 30 minutes because we were just, he was playing and I was like, come on, <laughs> come on, come let's on. go. Come let's on. Go. That's all you got. Come on, come on. Like a karate Oh my fight. goodness. Come on, bro. Don't hold nothing amazing. back. Let's play. That's awesome. Where did you guys film? We filmed in Seattle, which was really unique for me because I've never been there. Okay. And I didn't realize that the Asian, I knew the Bruce Lee's, you know, burial ground was there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it's a huge Asian influence there, which is amazing. And shockingly um, to me, because I'm a Southern boy, you know what I mean? Yeah. He, he told all these lies. And then you, you grow up and realize they really don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. Uh, I got to Seattle and like, I was just hugely embraced by wow. so much love. Like it was crazy. I've never been, I mean, normally I get to a new place, Bulgaria or whatever. I'm not running outside. I'm yeah. not jogging out there. I'll go to the <laughs> but I'm no, not. I, I'm not like, I, and I, I was running around Seattle like I own that. <laughs> I was like five miles here, three. I mean, yeah. element of, of, you know, they sell, I just laugh sometimes when I'm watching the television and they're trying to sell Seattle little places like, like their terror zones. And I'm just like, have you ever been there, bro? Just, I've never know. actually been to Seattle. It's on my list of places to go, but I, I haven't been there yet. It's an amazing yeah. place. And they have, when they say police reform, it's because, you know, I didn't see, I was there nine weeks. I didn't see one incident where I thought the police need to get involved. Uh, how much time do we have to talk today? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Don't get me started. Like there is a soapbox right to like right here. I just said, right. I don't see it over there. Oh, that's your box. Over yeah, there. that's my soapbox right mine over there. Like, right over there. <laughs> I'm gonna move mine over. Okay, <laughs> let me know if you want to coordinate those soapboxes. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know how much time we have, but it can happen. <laughs> 
But I also I was reading um, the press notes and saw that your director is actually from Seattle and said part of, you know, the awesome um, chemistry in the film was a tribute to where he grew up in, in Seattle and just the diversity of that area and just seeing you guys together as a trio, I feel like definitely paid homage to that based on without, what he said. Without question, and because he grew up there, there was so much love for him there. Mm -hmm. We just bombarded these places. They had mad love for us. It was like going to a family reunion. Seriously, everywhere we went, I had, I felt no, I, it was just crazy. I've never been in an experience where there was like just no pressure. Wow. Just, just love. Like they just wanted to service you. They just wanted to get you whatever you need, needed so that the experience would be yeah. well. And, and Bruce Lee's spirit was definitely with us. Who happens to be with like, Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> well, the thing is like, I love martial arts movies. I cannot recall seeing a film based on martial arts like the Paper Tigers ever before. Like, I agree with you. There's I so many you. elements. I agree with you, Mono. I, in fact, we said it, a three of us, Valen included, we set out to do just that. I was like, if this, I actually remember telling Elaine, I said, bro, I read this script and it's like, it's either corny or a classic. <laughs> but that's on us. Yeah. Like, it's either corny or a classic. And it's it's on a us. classic, though. So, yeah, for Sheezy. For <laughs> it's for absolutely a classic. Yes, I mean, it's yes, just, yes. it's, like, you know, you you go to see a martial arts film and you're like, OK, this is going to be like amazing fighting choreography and all these things. But like you don't get you don't always get the human element of it That's as right. much as you do in a film like The Paper Tigers. Like and it's so funny, like there were moments in this that literally had me in stitches. I'm like, they're nuts. And it, <laughs> it reminded me so much of my little crew and like how yeah, we dance sure. with each other and like rag on each other and it, right. like it's just it's great and the chemistry between you guys is is unmatched what I was that like for you? i love those dudes listen we're still really really close that's awesome uh it's a, it was i've been in this business um, and i've never had an experience like that like these guys from the second i met them were just wide open like most of the time you get on set you got egos and all the stuff and people yeah still scenes and like outwork you and it's like but that's not how that we we had breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day with each other. We, we would wait on each other like you you rap on your scene. We would wait to get in the <laughs> car so we could ride back together. Like it was like it was like a bromance. Like um, these guys, man. Like I would I would I would give them my last name and they would do the same for me. Wow, uh, it was crazy. Like it was really about midway through we looked at each other and we were like we all got to do this again. Now all those cats are very learned as well. They we've all had. A, mad experiences in this game yeah actors directors and and it just it's just one of those times and god puts his hands on something and it becomes bigger than your ego or your right that's what was at play here and i really i really attribute that to bob he just okay. really i don't know he just created an environment like you know when you put water on the soil yeah. Bloom. And he watered the soil and uh, nurtured it and flowers blooming. I love those brothers, man. You can tell. Them. You like you literally can tell. I felt like I was watching three friends in real life For go sure. through a myriad of just shenanigans and foolishness that For started sure. in childhood and like followed them into adulthood. Yeah. Like that's what For it felt sure. like. <laughs> well, well, you were. And um, and I guarantee you, they would say the same. That's awesome. Looking back, do you have like a favorite scene from the film that you just think about and it automatically brings a smile or, to your face or a laugh like immediately when you think about it? You said that <laughs> about nine moments. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so like, I, I can't even. I'm going to tell you, there's actually a scene that didn't make the film. Um, OK. Where I really it just it's like I really loved it. It was um, we were looking at Ron. Uh, should, should I say this? Because it's, it's just giving anything away. All right, we were looking at one of the characters and he got in a situation and you saw it. So like, yeah, he's, he's you know, so we're like, uh, this is when we decide we got to do something. And um, he was laying there. Um, 
he Bao gave us a moment where we could go over to him and like it was crazy. <laughs> I was like my man and Lane went over there to him and he whispered something in his ear. And this is not written, right? So All right. he was supposed to stand there and look. And then I went over there and I whispered some music. And then we walked over and we, we did that, you know, for my brother's oath. And I remember thinking to myself, I wonder what he had said. And before I could turn around, he was like, what'd you say? I was like, yeah, you want to know what I said, huh? <laughs> and the truth is, we just told that dude we loved him. Oh. You better stop it. I spent make like I spent time like fixing my face today. Like under normal <laughs> circumstances, I would just be, I mean, I still have my sweatpants on. It's only a party up here, but that's not the end right here. <laughs> but you are not gonna make me tear up today. You're not. So cut it out. <laughs> that's an awesome story though. Um I, I know that for a lot of the movie, you guys get your butts kicked, but um, can you talk a little bit about the fighting choreography and just um, the training? Insane. The training was I'm still training. Really? Yes, I like jujitsu. People just look at people getting choked out. They think that's easy. No. If you throw somebody the wrong way, you throw your shoulder out. You throw somebody the wrong way, you throw your you can throw your hip out. Like mm-hmm. there's a lot of things into like making sure you're in tight and spinning right. And like it, learning it is a very painful process because oh. the only way you know when you have a hold is if you almost if you yeah. block it. Yeah. So like. I was really boxing at first because because that's what I you know yeah that's, that's, I, that's, I did that undisputed yeah yeah uh, but then I was like I don't want to do that I done it already that's turbo you know what I mean yeah and they were like so what you thinking I'm like I want to choke this dude out like I want to do so from that point on we got into some jujitsu and yeah. oof. was that the only form of martial arts that you guys focused on um in the film or oh my guy. Oh, your guy specifically. My guy. Because my guy was the guy that was like, take him to the mat. So like once we found my area of expertise, that's where we that's where we put our focus. Gotcha. And the mother cats, they was running up walls and flipping over this. And <laughs> they they was doing all that crouching tiger stuff with no uh, white. And I was like, all right, I like this. I like this a lot. <laughs> um, but the training, the training, it's so like you can't stunt that. You can't stun it. Yeah. So you gotta figure out, you got to figure it out. It was intense, man. It was tense and it went on from the weeks of preparation before we shot, the week before we shot, while we were shooting, it just never stopped. Wow. And since we shot, like, I've just, I'm you really- kept up with it. Trying, yeah, yeah, because it, it is, it may, I'm lethal right about now. Like, I'd be the wrong guy. Okay. If you did at the movies. Like, just oh, don't- I'm, don't what I'm glad movie. I'm here. Yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Throw your hand up. I'm coming. Hey, Mc- Mc- Mikhail, I need I'll you. Handle that. I'll handle that. I'll handle that. <laughs> light you. work. Light I, work. I, I fast, <laughs> I'm talking about really fast. That's amazing. You're yeah. making me want to like, where can I go to train? Because I feel yeah. like it would be no. the amazing. Dudes I got, the, the dudes I got were a part of the film. So like, okay. I, don't know where you go, I know, but like you got the top notch people. So I don't yeah. know if anybody around here can no. hold, hold and they it. Make this, and they make it they make it easy for you to hear. A lot of people want to make the art difficult. They don't really want you to get it because it justifies them being masters in it. Uh, well, these guys reverse the thinking. If you're a master, you can teach it to a seven-year-old. Yeah. That's how they think about it. That's very so, true. That is true. That's what mastery is. If you don't, if you can't explain it in seven seconds, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, so like- a lot of points here. <laughs> so like these guys- they really can and man they had such a dope choreographer team they they just were dope super dope amazing wow okay if i'm if i'm a if i'm a young student out there and i want to give us some cats i wait till the credits start rolling and you see everybody on that stunt team i, I do the same instagram. thing <laughs> i get some instagram work going i go get these guys they got schools wow that's cool. That's so cool, though. I'm serious. Like, I really do want to train now. I'm like, hmm, ideas. I uh, yeah. guess <laughs> nothing, nothing sexier than a woman that can handle herself. Nothing. Well, I, I've done kickboxing before, but never Uh-oh. like. Uh-oh. I, I did martial Uh-oh. arts as a kid, like, you know, years ago. <laughs> that's still in you then. 
So it's it's the groundwork still there. You just, just have to wake up. it up with a lot of coffee. You just gotta wake it up. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of coffee. <laughs> and a little practice. Yes, ma'am. Yes, and a little practice. Uh, one of my other favorite scenes in the film actually was because, um, again, I feel like the film has all these different elements where it's like you get the fighting, you get the friendship, you get, um, you know, fighting for something that you love, you know, yeah. revenge, oh. there's an element of a revenge story in there. Um, but also it addresses some other real world issues. And the scene that I'm talking about in particular was the scene where the racial epithet was thrown at your character, mm -hmm. at Jim, and seeing how he reacted to it. For two reasons, it moved me. One, because so many times when that happens, the reaction that Jim had is the reaction so many of us want to have and can't. Yes. So that was like one element of it. But then yeah. also just seeing how that whole thing played out and how it did. Yep. And I, never let that epithet, that's the, and I never let that epithet go to I put his ass to sleep. Yeah. And I remember we were there and they were like uh, trying to trying to get around saying it. I said, hold up. It's written in the script. Yeah. It's written in the script. You going to say it, my boy. And my, and my man is so sweet. Like, yeah. this guy did not want to say yeah. it. And I said, let me tell you something. That's rough. Boy. That's rough. You don't got to worry about it. I told him, I'm going to handle you. <laughs> I'm going to handle all of it. Like, I'm going to make it all good. So you just make sure when you say it, you say it with some, you say it with some truth in it. Because mm. I'm going to take care of you. Don't you worry about me. I'm going to take care of you, brother. So, like, it's yeah. written. I saw it when I read the script the first time. I saw it when I read the script the second, third, fourth, fifth. It's just fade. So, mm. like, for some reason, it's my responsibility as an African-American man to handle you the way we all wanted to. So go ahead and let it rip. Mm. Like, it, I, I don't even remember it was written for him to say it twice, but the first time he said it, just my natural instinct, like all of us is like, what? what did right. You, what did you say right. That's what I'm I saying. I, I like, know, I, I, and then he repeated it. And I was like, oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. So yeah, now I this is it. what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Now you got, now, now, see, I was just, I had my backpack. I was ready to go. Right. <laughs> Right. We now have an issue. Now we have a Houston, we have a problem and I'm about to solve. So like yeah. and the I, fact that it led to a conversation later, I I thought was also a, a key element and something that you don't always see. Like you see the immediate reaction of it. Like you say something like that to somebody, obviously you're gonna get a certain reaction, right? Yeah. But then the conversation later that happened, yeah. I feel like added another layer of texture that yeah. was necessary, especially yeah. given everything that's going on right now with the African-American community, but also with our Asian brothers and sisters and the violence that they've been seeing at the hands of people who are idiots. Yeah. To say it plainly. <laughs> They're not happening around me. Same thing here. I'm, I will take that quick ride downtown. Um, yeah. I I um, I just tip my hat to God for that. Yeah, it was really powerful. Yeah, and I thought to myself, even when I first read, it, I said, "I got to handle this. Got to be me because I got to handle it. This yeah. got to be me because I got to handle it." And so, like, uh, I want to handle it for for I want to handle it. Someone handle it right. And you know, God had it so that the Jim is me. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you. I'm glad that's one of the moments you enjoyed because it was uh, a lot of discussion about, it. and yeah. um, it turned out really. I thought great on everybody's side. Even when we're sitting on the side of the thing, and everybody's all apologetic, and I'm spending no seat through that. I was like, I, that that may be one of my favorite moments because <laughs> I was supposed to say something like, "Yeah, I'm sorry too." I was like, oh, "Yeah." Man. Sorry, I'm actually not sorry. Uh, I don't apologize. I, yeah, yeah, that's why I sat there so long. They were like, You gonna say something? I said, Yeah, I, I got nothing. But it's funny you too be because it made me think of a personal instance that I had when I was in school, and I was just like, Some things are worth you getting in trouble for, and yeah. you don't care. So yeah. I went to a <laughs> predominantly white Quaker school for oh. middle school and high school, and so it was diverse ish but not really like so it was right. like four black people in the graduating class and then a few other folks that were multicultural 
Well, one of the times I'm in the gym playing basketball because I was a sports girl and one of my friend's little brothers was in there and we were playing against each other and he was losing and I was talking trash because that's what you do. Right. And so he got mad and he said what I thought was that word. Right, right. And my immediate reaction was like yours, like, oh, <laughs> so you want to not breathe, right? Like you want, you don't want oxygen, CO transfer. Like that's, that's what you, okay, cool. I can help you. And so I went after him and then thought about it later. Like, oh, this is a Quaker school. Like I really can get <laughs> suspended from this school that my parents Stay are up. paying through the teeth for me to have this private school education. But I just was kind of like, yeah, he was going to get some private schooling, too. Like, did you can yeah. get school. And he practice. didn't say it. I thought he said oh, okay. it. It felt like he uttered it. But that also gave a dialogue. I, that it, it promoted a dialogue later. So I was like, well, I bet you won't say it. I bet. Yeah. I bet he's good now. I bet he's still good. You're welcome for that lesson. You're welcome, for that, lesson. <laughs> You're welcome for that lesson. So, I, yes, I, I, had a, <laughs> I had a moment. I was like, I feel you, Jim. I, I love it. I've been there and yeah. I feel you. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's all I wanted to do was service it properly. Yeah. Time people get out of check and I'm thinking that nah, we got to do this right. So I'm just going to yeah. trust myself and go with it. And I said, Val, you're brilliant. Cause I'm sitting up on top 30 feet. Like there's no way I'm jumping down there. Yeah. So uh, we're apart long enough for me to get to. Okay. Let's yeah. Do this thing. Yeah. Normally. <laughs> Let's do this thing like y'all want to do it. Well, I can run up and fight. Because you know, if we were close, I'd have just grabbed him. You know what yeah. I mean? I'd have just been popping right there. But I had to get all the way down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> and by that time, it was like, all right. I can't so wait. Gonna, I can't wait for ahead. the folks that watch this to like look back at this part of the interview and then watch the film. They'll know sure. exactly what we're talking about. That's going to yeah. be amazing. It's going to be amazing yeah. to see. Um, for you looking back, knowing that this film is a classic, knowing that the chemistry is there, knowing that the script is amazing, knowing that what you guys put on the screen is something that's really going to resonate with people. How do you feel? Fantastic. Um, maybe the best feeling I haven't had in a long time as a, as just as an artist, I feel fulfilled and mm-hmm. that never happens. Um, I felt fulfilled the minute we walked off the set. I looked at both of them and I said, we have one, one thing we have to do before it's all said and done. Uh-huh. And they, I said, I don't care who you are, how far you've gone, me or Elaine, the opportunity to do this again arise and you drop whatever you're doing and we make it happen. This is our agreement. Tell your people, I'm going to tell my people, you tell your people. Yeah. Right then, we just agreed that like, we want, we, we, we were going to do everything in our power to make this happen again. And so we took every moment in the film better than just yeah. because we wanted to translate over to the audience because the audience literally dictates whether or not you dance again with the same three people. And um, to have it come out as good as it did and um, it's a tribute to all the hard work. And I am, uh, like I've seen it, uh, and I don't even tell you how many times I see it. <laughs> I might think I'm vain, but I have, I, um, I saw, I've seen it enough where I still can't find anything I didn't love, you know what I mean? So, yeah. That's uh, that's yeah. saying something too. Because yeah, right. from like, like I'm a fellow artist as well. And I'm in the process of working on a music project and I've literally been driving the producer I'm working with insane because <laughs> like we had a whole conversation the other day. He's like, listen, there's gonna be a minute change. No <laughs> one's gonna notice but you because right. you noticed everything. But <laughs> So I get it. So to be at a place where you feel completely pleased with how the project turned out is an amazing, incredible place to be. So, yeah, that's I, awesome. I, I want for nothing. I just want the world to see it. Okay. It will stand and, on what do you, and what do you want audiences to walk away with once they do? Where, where's part two? Well, that's where I I'm want, at. I want them to be like, I have to see more of those three dudes like tomorrow. Yeah. That's what I want them to walk away saying like those two, like when I walked away from Rocky, I was like, yo, where is part two? Like, yeah. like he done got <laughs> Adrian, can we go right to part two? Yes. And uh, 
I hope that this feeling gives the audience that same kind of feeling, like like it's over, like it just ended, like damn, like tag, it's over already. Yeah, wow. Well, I think your wish is absolutely going to come true because I can't wait to see part two and part three. Hopefully, that's right. (laughs) Where can people where can people follow you and keep up with all that you're doing? Uh, uh, my name on uh, Instagram is Mikhail Shannon Jenkins, and um, I try to keep that really up to date with how I'm banging. Um, but if you look up MYKEL uh, Shannon Jenkins, you'll you'll find me. I have a picture with like these pilot frames on, <laughs> so you know it's me. And um, and tap me out. I try to try to answer all of my little. DMs. If you say the right thing, you might get accepted. If you say the wrong hey. thing, I don't really see it. <laughs> All right. So I'll try to say the right thing when I send you a request. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You probably get accepted real fast. Real fast. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me, Mikhail. I really enjoyed speaking with you. I really enjoyed the movie and I can't wait for the world to see it. Let's get it. <laughs> Let's get it. Come on. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Two. No more challenges. Kung Fu without honor. It's just fighting. Three tigers, baby. That's right, that's right. How about taste, old man? Dad. Yeah, buddy. Do you know any Kung Fu? I'm retired. Who's the old guy? That was our teacher. We called him Sifu. You didn't hear. Sifu's dead. Something's not right. There was no heart attack. Do you think the poison fingers is real? Yep, Gao Sao. But you don't need to say it in English, man. When the hands cross, all will be revealed. <laughs> Did he hit me? No, it's just a glance. Just a glance, man. It's fine. It's you fine. got this. You got this. It's fine. <laughs> okay, look. Sifu could have set anyone off. Whoa! Time catches up to some people. Like you, the great three tigers. We all swore together that we would defend the weak. Out there is a very, very bad man. Where can we find this guy? Okay, go, 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 go. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. Hold on, hold on. What are you doing at three points? Just you it. You it. Three tigers back again. Does everything have to be a fight with you? Well, you might be a disgrace. The Sifu had only three disciples. I swear to be loyal to my brothers. To the very day I die. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Sun Spotlight. To keep up with Mikkel and all that he is up to, you can follow him on Instagram at Mikkel Shannon Jenkins. The Paper Tigers will be in theaters and on demand on May 7th, and you have to see this movie. It's awesome. To keep up with me and all that I'm up to, you can follow me on social media at Real Charisma, and be sure to follow the Philadelphia Sunday Sun on all social media platforms. I'll be back next Thursday at noon with a brand new episode, and I hope to see you there. Until then, love and light.